I talk, you listen. Welcome to my one-man panel of madness. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Dr. Geo's Who's... Well, you know the name of the, the program, so why am I even saying it? Anyways, okay, so Doctor Who Spyfall Part 2. Um, yeah, I, I mean, wow. I literally saw it twice uh, just because the first time everything happened so quickly, I think, that I had to see it the second time just to pick up on the things that I didn't pick up on the first time. So, yeah, I mean, we knew the monster was back. Uh, so, at this point, it's not even a spoiler. I mean, it's been more than a week. So we have a new monster, we have a new TARDIS, which um, it's actually kind of cool to see a Master's TARDIS. We haven't really seen one since, well actually we haven't seen one since the classic series. So, but overall this episode was, I even think, better than the first episode. I mean, it, it, it started off with a, with a bang, it started off with that wibbly wobbly, you know, Ryan figuring out how to fly a plane, you know, he can't ride a bike but he can fly a plane, which is awesome i think that's great and that's one of the things i really liked about this episode was that the companions did not have the doctor and they have to figure things out for themselves which i think is important i think uh if you're traveling with the doctor there's going to be times where you're going to have to figure things out on your own you know the doctor's not always going to be there and i think that the sooner companions realize that then they know that you know Hey, we may have to do stuff on our own. And I, I'm really liking the fact that now, you know, Graham is like trying to figure things out. You know, the last episode, part one, Graham was pretty much being told that the fact that she was a, a man in their previous incarnation was a real thing. And, you know, now they're trying to, you know, think about all these questions they have. Like, who is the doctor? You know, we're traveling with this person, alien, we don't even know anything about. And, uh, but, you know, I think the, just the story overall had so many um, elements of almost like a, a movie as opposed to a TV show, which I really love when when a lot of newer TV shows are doing. Instead of it being sort of like just like a TV show, they really put in the effort and the budget for sort of larger than life scenes and productions. You know, going back to uh, France in the 40s, I mean, it just... You know, the, the top of the Eiffel Tower, there were just so many things that were really, really just well done that kept you on the edge of your seat. And it's been a while, I think, since I've actually have been on the edge of my seat. And both these two episodes, By Fall Part 1 and Part 2, I mean, I couldn't, I, I couldn't take my eyes off the, the TV. You know, it was like, okay, if I blink, I'm going to miss something. And so it was just a really, really well done episode. I, I mean, I even love that they added, you know, uh, Ada Lovelace, and and I'm probably gonna say her name completely wrong. Nor Inayat Inayat Khan, <laughs> um, you know, to add a little bit more of that sort of history aspect of Doctor Who. That from day one, that's something that Sidney Newman, creator of, of Doctor Who, had always said that you know we should put in the show. To give the kids a little bit of you know history, so I thought it was cool, and also to show again that you know hi history has been very male dominated, and to see that these two women had something to do with what and who we are today uh, is amazing. And I love that she um, that they both traveled with the Doctor, and of course that line where Graham asks, "Are we being replaced?" Um, it, it's cool to see her have a, a set of companions for this specific episode. And on the, the subject of the Doctor, I just have to say that it now seems like Jodie has gone into her own uh, doctor mode. Not that she really wasn't in her first season, but, you know, every series, whenever we get a new doctor, it takes a little bit of time for that actor to kind of become the doctor. You know, um, they don't become the doctor right off and running. You know, they've just gone through regeneration. So you can understand that the first season, the first travels, is the doctor still trying to figure out, well, what... What am I? You know, who am I? What is this doctor going to be like? And, but I definitely can say that she just nailed it. For me, at least, she definitely had a lot of the doctor moments and quirkiness that were her own. Um, I know, you know, a lot of people will say that she's just kind of 
becoming a little bit like the 10th, but you know, she's Jodie Whittaker. She's not David Tennant. So she is doing what Jodie Whittaker does as a doctor. Okay. And with that, if I had a microphone, I would drop it because, um, I think that a lot of fans out there, especially the very critical ones, honestly, you don't have a clue. And I don't want to be mean about it, but I think that, you know, so many people are just out to be negative about the whole situation. And I, for one, think that Jody in these two episodes has really hit the mark. She hit it, hit it in the first episode. She definitely hit it in Spyfall Part 2. She has her moments where she's like back and forth and back and forth, but she has her own quirkiness. And I think that's what she's trying to do for us as the fans is try to come up with a doctor that you know, can entertain us, but can be her own. I mean, it's Jodie Whittaker's doctor. I mean, I mean, you know what I mean? She's portraying the doctor in her own way. So, um, yeah, how to just go on there? Because I, I do see that there's still a lot of negativity that is just inappropriate because there's a lot of bashing going on. And I mean, you know what, folks? It's your loss. If you want to continue to bash the show, then, hey, it's your loss. Okay? And that's all I'm going to say. But, yeah, I mean, the doctor was just the doctor for me. And the interactions she had with the master were just great. I mean, the little nods to, and I believe that one of the nods with regards to, uh, the time when they were on the Eiffel Tower, I think had to do with the last time that they were kind of together in that kind of environment was with the fourth doctor in Logopolis, which was the, the episode in which the fourth doctor regenerates into the fifth doctor. I think, I'm not sure, but there was something about the name of the telescope they were talking about and the location. I might be wrong, but whatever. I'm gonna, for me, that's what it was. And I think the chemistry between Sasha and Jody is is really good. You know, um, and I like the fact that there wasn't this whole kind of, well, Doctor, you're a woman now or anything like that. You know, because we really don't know where this master is coming from. You know, there's debate whether. It was after Missy, which may or may not be because we know Missy essentially is dead. But, okay, and I say this all the time with regards to the master. You know, I'm a huge fan of Dracula, and Dracula just keeps coming back. If you're a fan of the Christopher Lee movies, Dracula always comes back, okay? They have stabbed him. They have done almost everything under the sun, exposed him to the sun, and he comes back. They've even exposed him to running water. Yeah, it's actually one of my favorite ones, um, Prince of Darkness. Uh, you know, so they've done all this, and he still keeps coming back. So even Missy says it in, the, in Series 9 opener, you know, I'm back, no big deal, you know. Like, she doesn't have to explain it, because that's the monster. That's the way the monster's always been in classic Doctor Who. He just shows up. He steals people's bodies. He moves on. He, you know, um, we know for a fact that the Time Lords at one point brought him back, regenerated him and all that, so... I mean, for people to get so hellbent, ooh, name of a Doctor Who episode, um, you know, where this, this monster's from, yeah, of course I want to know. I think it's interesting. Um, is he between, you know, uh, the Missy monster and the, the, you know, I guess we can call him, um, well, maybe not. Well, let's see, the John Sims monster. Well, okay, we'll, we'll call him the John Sims monster because that, you know, um, or Saxon. You will call him this. Actually, Saxon. Saxon Master sounds better. Yeah, that sounds better. Okay. So in between those two, and you know, this monster then eventually becomes missing. I don't know, but we'll see. I mean, that's what's great about Doctor Who. We don't know. Now let's talk about the one thing that really got and was like the last like ten minutes of the show. Specifically, was when we, uh, you know, are in the TARDIS by ourselves. You know, the doctor has gone to Gallifrey and it's in ruins. You know, we learned that the monster did it, you know, and essentially he did all these, all these things in episode one and two just to get her attention because he burned down Gallifrey because of a lie. Okay. So what is this lie? Now, here's my thing. I'm really hoping they don't mess up too much with one of my favorite doctors from the classic uh, era, which is the seventh doctor. But in the seventh uh, in the Seventh Doctor era, in Remembrance of the Daleks, uh, there's a moment where he kind of gives a hint that he was somehow involved with Razalon and Omega, 
and that they were like the three pillars of Time Lord society. Now, I don't know. He plays it off like, oh, no, no, I've heard, you know. So I don't know. You know, that's another thing that I don't know if they're going to, uh, you know, if they're really going to go into that. I don't know because, you know, again, it's Doctor Who. And like Sidney Newman would say, it's Doctor Who. We don't want to give too much information. But there is a moment there where she's kind of remembering which seems like a child. Now, I can't tell, for the love of me, whether it's a girl or a boy. Now, most people are saying it's a girl. You're looking up into the sky, and there's this kind of like a purpley sky, whatever. What is it? You know, who is the doctor? But we don't know. So I'm really interested in seeing. I don't have a major problem with canon being changed because it's going to change. It has to change for Doctor Who to remain relevant and exciting for us, the fans. If not, it's just going to be the doctor and okay so what now what so they always have to throw a spin into it if they do it right yes you know we've heard rumors that there's a there's a rumor out there that supposedly somehow the doctor's first incarnation as a man was the first doctor but that before that it was a female line of doctors and maybe she's actually you know some kind of goddess who knows we don't know so very exciting uh, definitely, I would definitely give this one a 9 out of 10. Um, maybe 8, 4, no, 8.59, around that area, um, on my Dr. Ju, Dr. Gio Who meter, and, uh, because it was just exciting. I mean, I really liked it. A second time around, I saw it. It was really good. It just had a really, just all the elements that I expect from a Dr. Who TV show, and just the story, you know, the back and forth, um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, and I'm very excited to see what comes up next week, where we have our uh, next episode, episode three. We're already epi three episodes into Doctor Who. Oh, I hate that it's going so fast because, you know, I, I you know, they're going to have to announce when the next season, which I'm assuming will be at some point in 2021. Um, hopefully, we're not doing a whole year, but even if we do a whole year, it'll be 20 um, at some point in 2021. So. We'll see, but very excited. Doctor Who is definitely back, and I think that, um, yeah, I think they're heading in the right direction so far. Like I said, we have a bunch of new episodes coming, and we have a lot of new stories to go through and figure out what is the arc. Is this whole Timeless Child going to be the arc? Are we even going to find out about it at the end of this series? Maybe, maybe not. I just really hope they bring back the Moss, which, by the way, I love his wardrobe bit on the joker side but i love the joker so that's all i have for this week keep listening and yeah until next